Hello students, uh, this is going to be our third and final spaceship shooter uh, program, so I'm going to go up here and modify this to spaceship 30AA. I'm going to save it. I'm using the desktop version. You probably are using the web version. That's all fine and good. If I look over here and see what my game does so far, I can move around, shoot lasers. That's great. What we're going to do in today's video is we're going to add some enemies. Uh, we want our enemies, in this case they're just going to be meteors or rocks or ast well, asteroids, I guess would probably be the best thing. It's not quite going to mimic the asteroids arcade game, but we'll get close to that uh, somewhat. Uh, the enemies are going to rotate at a random rate. The enemies will appear at a random positions at the top of the screen and move downward. And the enemies will die or disappear when hit by a laser or the bottom of the screen. So I'm um, really wanting to focus in on... Uh, adding this random effect to make your game a little bit more interesting. So here we go. Let's go ahead and add a new sprite. We're going to choose it and I think there's a rock sprite there. I might modify this just a little bit. Make, I don't know, sort of erase it, make it a little bit more circular. That's not quite circular, but whatever. That's even less circular. All right, sure. There we go. Fine. You notice the there's that little crosshair in the middle. That's the sprite origin, and so I'm going to uh, to move this up there. Although I can't leave well enough alone here. Sure. I'll put that right in the middle. That looks fine. It's called the rocks. Okay. Um, I might actually just put it over here. Uh, what I'm thinking about doing is I'm thinking about having multiple of these uh, rocks or asteroids or whatever sort of coming down uh, from the top of the screen. And so I'm going to, uh, to make clones of this, uh, this main rock right over here. So let's see here. Um, I want it to rotate at a random rate. Let's go ahead and start off. I just want to see if I can get this to happen with this rock itself. So, um, I probably want it to be rotating constantly, so I need a forever loop. And if I just wanted him to rotate, you know, regular, I could just have him turn 15 degrees, and he's always going to turn 15 degrees. But really, I, I want this uh, number to be random, and so therefore I, I'm going to have to create a variable. And I'm going to make that variable a random number, and then I'm going to... Uh, rotate that number of degrees. So let's go ahead and make a make a random uh, rate. So we'll say uh, rock spin rate. And when we first begin, so when the green flag is clicked, we're going to uh, set rock spin rate to some random number. Now the random number I believe is here in the operators. Here we go. Pick random numbers. So this will pick a random number from 1 to 10. I'm going to pick a random number from negative 20 to 20. And then if I go down to variables I'll click turn rock spin rate de degrees. So here you can see I ran it one time. It apparently picked a number probably a positive number but kind of small so you can see it's slowly spinning if I hit stop and run again now uh, this is a great example because now it's spinning the other way um, and a little at a faster rate so I, every time I do this now it's spinning forwards every time I hit the green flag it's going to pick a new uh, variable here or pick a new new value and then it will continuously spin at that rate so that's kind of interesting sort of effect there all right. Uh, the thing is, though, I actually don't uh, want this particular one to spin. I want I'm going to create a couple of clones. So what I'm going to do is go up here. I think it was events or control control. So when the green flag is clicked, I'm going to create a couple of clones. And then I'll say when I start as a clone, pick a random number and start spinning. So there you go. You can see there's a couple of clones. Um, they're showing up right there, and they're spinning. Uh, the thing is, I want those uh, clones to appear somewhere uh, randomly along the top 
bar. So I'll say when I start as a clone, I want to uh, set my x value to, once again, some random number. So I'm, I might uh, duplicate this. I want the, the clone's x position to be a, a value. Now if I look over here in my coordinate system, let's see if I can just grab this rock here. So I'm going to move him all the way over to the far left side and look down. I'm not sure what these x values are. So I negative 218. So it looks like the uh, negative 231. So yeah, negative 220 ought to be a pretty good leftmost number. And if I were to make a guess, possibly now I'm looking at x values of 230. Okay, so I'm going to say positive 220. So set x to pick a random value between negative 220 and positive 220. And so what I should expect now is whenever I hit the green flag, I'm, there's going to be two clones that are created. And when each one of those clones are created, then it, each one of them will pick a random uh, value and set their x coordinate to that location. And so there you go. All right, they're synchronized. If you wanted to, you could have some, you know, as an individual exercise, try to make them rotate at different rates. But there we go. We can see them showing up at different locations. I'd like their y value, though, to be just a little bit higher, maybe kind of somewhere up about here. I'll look at the y value, 177. So I'm going to go and say set the y value to 177. Okay, so they're kind of starting at the top of the screen. That looks pretty good. And then I want those rocks to move downward. So let's see here. Um, while we are in the forever loop, we will change the Y, and I'm wanting it to go from up here down, so that's going to be a decreasing Y value. So change Y by, oh, I don't know, negative 2. We'll see what that looks like. There we go. Get out of the way, rocket. And there they go. And there's some more. And there's some more. OK. It's starting to get a little bit interesting. Uh, what other stuff did we say? Enemies appear at random positions at the top and move downward. Check. Enemies die when hit by a laser or at the bottom of the screen. So here inside this forever loop, we'll go to not events, but maybe control. We'll say if it comes in contact. So contact is a sensing thing. So if touching um, the edge. OK, here we go. Laser events. Nope. Here we go. Control. Delete this clone. And then I'm just going to duplicate that. And. I still have that bottom border, so I'll say if hit the bottom border, then delete this clone. All right, hey, you up there, You're right there. All right, so well, that's interesting. Did both of them show up there? Oh, there we go. I guess one of them may have hit the laser. There, there you go. They're falling, and they d f delete one there. At that, I could say some other things. I could say if their y value is greater than a certain one, but I don't really particularly like it that they're disappearing right here. I'd prefer maybe if their their y value was something way down here, but I'll let you experiment with that. Now the next thing is though, I, I'm only creating two clones, so let's go ahead and make a few more clones. Uh, let's see, repeat ten times. Sure, I'll have ten waves of clones, um, but there you go, they all fall down at the same time, and I say, whoa, wait a second, I don't want that to happen. I, I want them to, like I said, come in waves. So uh, I could repeat one second. Um, that might be enough, not quite enough. Three seconds seems like a reasonable amount. So every three seconds, we should see. Yep. Now you can see the laser actually continues. I probably should have the laser uh, destroy itself if it hits one of those. But that's that's an activity that I'll leave up to you. Okay, and there's all kinds of things. I mean, if y'all wanted to have more randomness, I could wait a, a random set period between you know three and five seconds so that it was a little more random, and you know I could add some points whenever I destroy a rock, or you know lose points whenever the the rock hits 
the spaceship or have another variable that controls lives and things like that. But you know, those are all just sort of uh, extra things that you could um, do uh, on your own yeah, just to, to make the game a little more fun. You could even change all the sprites and make this a totally different type of game where maybe this is some sort of animal and there's other animals and you're shooting something with against them or you're trying to collide with them. I don't know. All sorts of uh, fun ideas that you can experiment with or create your own game. But um, this particular example, I want to show you what the random uh, feature was used for and how you can use that to make your games a little more interesting. So good luck making your own scr scratch games and thanks for watching.